Hi there, this is Farah. This lesson is the very first of the series of the videos that I'm gonna create about Docker and how to use Docker. In this lesson, I talk about the actual production grid usage of Docker. So let's begin. The agenda is that I'm gonna talk about what is Docker, why we use Docker, and how we use it. And I will go through an example and show you on how to use Docker. Some brief and uh, introductory information on the Docker. So, what is Docker? It's a virtualization technique. Previously, we used to use virtual machine like VMware to virtualize, and it, it used it is used for uh, virtualizing a whole device. But with Docker, we can virtualize just your code or part of the system that you want. It provides an isolated environment that you can run as many services as you want on the same machine on the same host. So, in order to do that, there should be a Docker image. The basis of using Docker is creating a Docker image. An image is consisted of OS operating system, the kernel, the software that is needed to run your application, and the actual code that you write for your application. Once you build that image. We need to run that image, which creates a Docker container. The container is is is, a, is run in the Docker engine runtime environment. It's a lightweight process that consumes too little resources, like CPU and memory. With the Docker, you can have as many containers running as possible for your application. And Docker can be run in any platform, Linux. Windows and Mac operating system. So why we use Docker? The very first benefit of the account is that with using Docker configuration, you can have absolute separation of your environments in test, development, and production. And it's easy and very fast for deployment. You pack, ship, and run the containers using Docker. And it provides orchestration mechanism with Docker Swarm or Kubernetes when you have a very huge application. And with it, it provides easy management and monitoring of the containers. So how to use it then? The very first step is to build a Docker image. So you create a Docker file and provide all the steps that needed to build that image. As an example, you can see from the right side that this is a very basic example of a Docker image that runs a Python application. Once you build the image, you run that image using Docker one command. Docker provides a full feature set of commands that I will go through them in my next videos. So let's go through an example, the exciting part of it. So I will create a very small web application, microservice, using a AIO HTTP web framework. It's a very famous web framework that is used recently to creating web services or web microservices. So as you see, this is a very basic example of running a web application using AIO HTTP. All it does is that at its very base root, URL, it just shows a hello world message to the user. And the app is run on the port 8000 of the container. Now let's run it, run the, the very simple app in a Docker environment through a Docker container. So first, in Docker, the very first thing is that you need to define your base image. So I use the from keyboard to define my base image, which is Python 8.3 image. This is already built and available in the Docker Hub. I just use it. Once I define it, Docker CLI will automatically pull that image for me. And I will build my new image based off that image. There are many images available, but I chose to use Python because I want to write a Python application. And then I use Python package manager called P to install the framework, AIU HTTP library. And then I create my base directory 
in this directory I can put as many source code and source files I needed for my application. So the first three steps is that you define your base image, you install all the requirements, and then you create your base directory. So which I have done. And then I just copy my uh, source code, the very same file that I have created here, and I put it under my base directory. And at the end, we need to run a command to run the container. Once we run the container, there should be a command available to execute your application. And for me, it's a very simple Python application. So I use Python program to run my Python file. Very simple. So once we build our Docker files, we need to build the image. We use Docker CLI. We use Docker CLI command and I call my application backend. It's a backend application. We, later we may use it to actually create other applications as well. So I call it backend application, backend image. So I use Docker build command. The name of the image is backend and use the latest tag by default. And the dot is the context which locates, which says where is the Docker file located. So this Docker is not running. <coughs> and then I build the image. As you see, the image is built here. This is a default Docker IO hub like name. The name of the image is back. And then once the image is built, I use Docker run command to run. The image so it didn't throw any errors which means that it's only the one now I want to see my web application in my browser so I go to localhost port 8000 I already been there port 8000 now it says that Safari can connect to the server which means that port 8000 is not available but we said that we are using port 8000 the reason is that the container is absolutely completely isolated from the host and host services cannot reach to that container unless so there's a thing called port mapping in docker and we can port a container from inside the container to the host so it can be used in the host in the machine so all we have to do is that we use that p flag and we define the internal port of that and then external port that we want to map to. So we use Docker port mapping to define our application and we see that it showed hello world to us. If we want to port it, map it to a different port, for example, 8004, just simply change our local port here. So here it, it means that 8000 is no longer available we use port 8000. Now, the one other important thing is that sometimes you have many files and you just change them. For example, here I may change my code here. And I want to run the container again. But I, the changes are not reflected in my web application. The reason is that you have to build the Docker image again. Every time you make changes, you have to build the image from scratch. Now it's built, and then I run it again, and I see that it came. But this is still not ideal. I don't, I don't want to build image every time I make some changes. So there is some other features in Docker called Docker. It's called volume mounting. So you can map one file from the machine from your host to find inside the container. So all we have to do is that I say from the current directory, this is my source file, map to the file which is inside the container. So with this, every time I change the source file, it will be automatically updated from inside the container. For example, let's say I update my file again. 
and whenever I refresh my web page, the change is there. So I don't need to I don't need to build image again and again. I just kill my container, start again, okay? and then I see that the change is there. Okay. This is why this was a very brief introduction to Docker. I have many interesting ideas that I will show in the future. For example, even we don't need to, one of the things that we don't need to kill the container every time. We want automatically load up the application. I will talk about that in my next videos. So I have also want, I also want to create videos on how to create a chat application. I will talk about the scaling. So far we have a very huge overload on the system. I will talk about how we can use Nginx to scale our application. And you talk about Docker Compose for orchestration. And then I will go into more details about Docker. For example, Docker Network and also Docker Jenkins, which is a very, sorry, Jenkins. I will talk Jenkins, which is extremely useful too for in development in, in, for CI CD, continuous integration and continuous development. Hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions feel free to ask below the video.